The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It's Thursday, April 27th, 2023, and this time next week in our video fishing forecast, we'll be running down the latest fluke catches at the Jersey Shore as the season kicks off again on Tuesday, May 2nd. That's coming up. Of course, the limits for 2023 are the same as they were in 2022. That is every state along the Atlantic coast, but here in New Jersey, what that means is Because of this mandate from NOAA Fisheries, the Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council, God, I guess, that we all have to keep the same regulations as last year. That's why it starts on May 2nd. That's also why we will have a three fish bag limit once again in New Jersey. Two of those fish can be in the slot from 17 to 17.99 inches, and one of those fish can be 18 inches or above. So you can keep one in a slot, one at 18, one at 18, Nothing else, you can keep two slots, whatever, three fish bag limit. Except, of course, if you're fishing at Island Beach State Park come Tuesday, that is two fish at 16 inches as a surf caster at Island Beach State Park. Or if you're running on Delaware Bay west of the coal regs, then your limits down there are going to be three per angler at 17 inches. And of course, as a reminder, Delaware season is open. That's right, it's the season that never closes for you Delawareans. Size and bag limit remain the same for fish at 16 inches. And the reason I bring this up, of course, is a reminder because everybody's chomping at the bit for fluke season, but in our reports this week at thefisherman.com that you'll also find in the May edition of the Fisherman Magazine out this week, you'll find in our North Jersey reports in particular a boatload of fluke being caught last week and into this weekend by surf casters throwing plastics and some guys on the troll as well. So when we look at this week's video fishing forecast based on the weekend reports, based on the trends since last week's report, since Monday and the action that's going, there is a strong connection, of course, between this video forecast and the May edition. That, of course, makes sense, right? But exclusively in the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition, of the Fisherman Magazine out this week. You'll find two fluking articles in the local edition there that'll help you get geared up and squared away for summer flounder season. An Atlantic and Cape May County focus by Captain Scott Newhall called South Bound and Down, while Nick Konicheski will cover the rest of the state and all the other action as he looks at the rest of the coast in his tactical fluking article with a specific breakdown along those channel edges. There's also a piece in the glossy uh, edition, the glossy section of the May edition by Matt Broderick on back bay strategies, which in my opinion is where you're best gonna find that early season action next week. Uh, Those back bays uh, from Ludlam, Great Bay, Little Bay, all the way up to Raritan Bay and the Navisink, that's where those fish are going to come in first and get hungry and work those flat waters. Also, in the May edition, first-time fisherman, author, and sea trout sharpie Ken McDermott of Cape May County offers his take this week on hunting tide runner weak fish in the month of May. I say sea trout because, well, weak fish is really a, a trout, but Kenny also does a lot of speckled trout hunting in Jersey in the fall. But it's our fish of the month for May, weak fish in the Dreamboat Fishing Challenge, which kicks off on Monday, May 1st. Pink zooms, uh, the finesse, bucktails with purple fire tails, the classics, but the time has come to hit the weak fish grounds at the Jersey Shore. Here's case in point, over the weekend. Jason from Fisherman Supply in point was out and about this past Friday night into early Saturday morning, under cover of dark, probably looking for striped bass on his buddy's center console or skiff but happy to report that the tide runners have returned after last Thursday's new moon. In last week's video fishing forecast, that was something we talked about. Talked about soaking those plastics in finescence. Well, lo and behold, they're here. So yeah, nighttime is the right time for chasing unicorns, but it's not mandatory to be fishing 
when the sun goes down. TJ sent this picture to Charlie's Bait and Tackle on Saturday. 28 inch jumbo weak fish caught during the middle of the day somewhere in Ocean County while tossing a green shine voodoo shad. That's one of these suckers here. Picked this one up a couple of years ago. The one thing I noticed with this, I'll say this right off the bat, as you're experimenting with new plastics, if you try these voodoo shads, same thing with the uh, Patrick Sabeel, the, uh, the, the Hyper Elastics, the Dart Spin Pros. These, just like the Z-Mans, you gotta keep them separated because these plastics don't play as well together with stuff like the Kettle Creeks. I can put all my Kettle Creeks and Finesse and Zooms all together, no problem, but these are made of a different material. So if you lock these away in the box with all the rest of your plastics, next time you go in there, it's gonna look like soup. That's the Voodoo Shad. Again, Members only Dreamboat Fishing Challenge kicks off May 1st and Weak Fish is the fish of the month. And New Jersey, Delaware Bay subscribers to the Fisherman Magazine are uniquely uh, uh, set up uh, to be on the board at the, at the very beginning, uh, right? Because of our Weak Fish run. We've got a pretty solid Weak Fish run. So if you're looking to get on that Dreamboat Fishing Challenge leaderboard starting on Monday, Weak fish is probably the best ticket for you. Back to the reports. In South Jersey this, this week, we're getting solid reports of sizable striped bass in the surf uh, from the jetties and in our outback waters as well. That Fortescue stretch, that Fortescue beach stretch, it continues to impress. It has been hot all season long. I heard from Higby's Bait and Tackle this week about Tyler Smith from Millville catching and releasing a jumbo 45 and a half inch or late Monday afternoon. Now most of this, uh, this action with the surf casters at Fortescue Beach has been with bloodworms. Uh, much tougher to get throughout the state of New Jersey, uh, but chunks I hear up the stretches of the Delaware, uh, shad, uh, bunker, also working well with some of those striped bass, uh, especially along that Delaware stretch. Getting down into Cape May, Nick at hands Two bait and tackle tells us striped bass fishing began heating up heading into this past weekend with multiple reports of bass hitting on the North Cape May Bay beaches with bunker clams and plugs all producing. Clams, another bait that's sometimes tough to get with the clam boats in operation, but fresh clams just really do the trick, right, for striped bass. Um, as well as black drum. Well, two clams were minding their own business on the beach and one of them was assaulted. A salted clam, it did the trick in Sea Isle for Rich Tuesday morning as he caught and released this 48 incher, which the folks at Sea Isle Bait and Tackle said swam away strong. Big fish, Cape May County, lock it in. Clams are doing the trick. Could be a straight and narrow, fresh out of the, out of the clam shell, but salted clams obviously working as well. We're getting plenty of solid reports of striped bass in the front and backyard in Cape May County right now. For dead stickers, like I said, clam is the ticket to stripers by day, maybe, maybe even a black drum as well. You can try those soft plastics and plugs out back, especially under cover of dark. And again, just like those weak fish guys that we talked about, creeping while we're sleeping is often the way to go, especially for some of those jumbo striped bass. Ryan Albano let me know that he got this bass on an Atlantic City jetty earlier this week, incoming tide on a soft plastic. Kettle Creeks, that's the one I showed you before. Love these Kettle Creeks. Jersey's own Kettle Creeks. Uh, of course, the NLBNs have been getting it done all season long. You can also pick up your packages of Tsunami uh, swim shads. Ideally, the smaller swim shads are probably gonna get the ticket, uh, get it done right now, but they will all get it done under cover of darkness by day. Uh, I did mention, mention, we're talking about lures and such. I mentioned Chris Bishop from Missouri, who was in town last week. It's for taking our local striper fishing at the Jersey Shore. He said the daytime bite for pluggers in the, uh, along the North Coast was a little bit slow during his time last week, but the night bite was on fire. It's one thing that I'm hearing a lot of from the guys on the Raritan Bay. Um, perhaps it's around the timing of that new moon, but um, the, 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 the bite fluctuates a little bit. Uh, and I would keep that in mind that I do think the stripers eventually are gonna be on the move. So perhaps it's after that last uh, moon, uh, lunar event we had last Thursday, the new moon. So it's transitional, right? It's a transitional period with those stripers on the rare. And as a lot of those fish are gonna head up the Hudson River to do their spawning thing. But from the looks of things out front, all along the coast, Atlantic, 
Cape May, Ocean, and Monmouth County, those bass are on the move. They're popping up continually along the coast. Uh, not just baits, I mentioned clams. Uh, we talked about bloodworms before, bunker chunks, but I do think it's about time to break out some of that plugging equipment, right? Some of the top water poppers, the pencils. Uh, I am getting some reports of those fish hitting up on top. Bluefish, we've been waiting for a while for that, right? Well, the, well, the, the, the onslaught, the, the, the blitz conditions, they're not underway just yet. But I guess some early scouts have begun to show up in our area. I heard from Tommy at Surf City Bait and Tackle earlier this week. Uh, Donald Tharp had the first bluefish weigh in for the LBI Spring Derby. Derby, uh, 20 and a quarter inch fish, good table fish, weighed in about 2.38 pounds. And according to Tommy, though, several bluefish were caught earlier this week in the LBI surf, all ranging in that two to four pound class. So that's good to see. And maybe these are the early arrivers. I want to see those big headed racers uh, blitzing through our inlets pretty soon. And of course, bluefish too. Another qualifying species in the Fisherman Magazine's Dreamboat Fishing Challenge. We always get New Jersey, Delaware Bay subscribers on the leaderboard at the end of the year because of the jumbo uh, bluefish that we have. But I do expect to see a few 10 pound class fish arrive sometime on or before the timing of that next full moon, that next lunar event, on May 5th. Now these fat-headed racers that barrel through the inlets can sometimes get into the double-digit class, and I am hoping to see the jetties and bulkheads lined with anglers enjoying blitz conditions at no time, or in no time at all. It did happen in this video that I shared. It was from April 29th, 2021 at Manasquan Inlet. That's when the bluefish invasion started. It got underway hot and heavy. The bulkhead was lined with anglers, throwing the Hopkins, throwing the old pencils that they didn't feel like repainting. They swapped out the trebles, but we're right on schedule at this point for spring madness. And who knows, this weekend could be the weekend for the bluefish invasion. By the time this video is done and uploaded, it could already be underway. Back to the Dreamboat Fishing Challenge because we have a couple of changes in the way we're doing the tournament in 2023 that I think you're gonna like. First off, you won't be competing against any former Dreamboat champs in 2023. So the leaderboard is open to folks who have not already won the big prize. And also, this is pretty cool, wild card prizes are being thrown into the mix this year. They're gonna be spread out over the 70 slots on the big board. One good fish in any of the top 10 positions across seven different species categories, 70 spots in all, will earn you a prize in 2023. They include a Psionics Night Wave unit for night vision navigation, or an Ingle EN80 cooler, maybe even one of four Accurate Fury reels. If you're on that wild card slot at the end of the season long tournament, that prize is yours. Sort of like, I always think about it as the old Monopoly game from McDonald's, right? You gotta, you gotta create those bingo cards. So the more fish that you're able to get on that Dreamboat leaderboard, the better your chances, one in each category. To get involved in this, it's a $29.95 tournament. That's all you need to enter the Dreamboat Fishing Challenge. And then you're competing for a Steiger 21 with a Yamaha 150 guided by a Humminbird Apex 13 Mega chart plotter and an 87 inch 112 volt Minn Kota Riptide Tarova and the Orion Offshore First Aid Kit. Everything that you need to catch more fish at the end of the tournament. There are a lot more prizes too to be added to the big board during the season. We're gonna have some special events here in video coming up in the next several weeks as we add wild card prizes to that leaderboard in terms of trying to spice this up in 2023. So go to thefisherman.com, update your subscription. That's all it takes, it's just $29.95 for the year. You join the Dreamboat Fishing Challenge, oh, plus you get 12 monthly editions of The Fisherman Magazine and 26 digital weeklies. Now one popular local species in the Dreamboat Fishing Challenge for 2023 that will actually be off limits as of Monday when the tournament kicks off is blackfish. TOG, of course, comes to a screeching halt after this weekend. It's closing in the Garden State on as of May 1st. 
and it won't reopen again until August 1st. So May 1st, Monday, no more talk, not until August. So you only have one more opportunity to get on those blackfish this weekend. Most of the for hire boats, the party boats especially, continuing to sail for blackfish. So get yourself to a boat this weekend. It is of course a bit different down in Delaware where a four fish bag in 16 inch minimum size on blackfish runs until May 15th. One local specimen there in Delaware that did not need to be taped out was this 20.4 pound tog caught by Dave Tribbett aboard the Grizzly there out of Lewis earlier this week. So if you're still chomping at the bit to continue to tog fish after things close in New Jersey, by all means, give the folks at Lewis Harbor Marina in Lewis, Delaware a call, they'll set you up. Maybe the Kitty did, the Grizzly, or with Captain Jamar Chase, of course, as well. A Delaware Bay tradition for South Jersey anglers and Delawareans alike for the months of May and June is Black Drum. I expect we'll be hearing more reports on these giant boomers next week as the for hire fleet gets back in gear, going strong in search of drum on the Delaware Bay. I would imagine there's a lot of boats that are already chartered starting on Monday. So black drum action will kick off uh, in the coming week as well. The boomers though have spread out, not just Delaware Bay, but that early reporting uh, started with our back bays, right? It's spread up through the lower half of New Jersey in recent weeks. I heard from uh, Dr. Adam Aguiar from Stockton University earlier this week that Dylan Gowerbrand, he caught himself a big old black drum from shore this week. Love those sod banks in the spring. Nothing like back bay fishing this time of year. So by, by boat uh, or by bank, di don't discount those skinny waters out back. Drum, yes. Fluking next week, of course, but popping and plugging along the sedges for striped bass as well. It's just something I love. Century's Rob Crossley. Uh, he reports from Barnegat Bay this week that his son, Rob Jr., put a Kettle Creek swing shad to a hungry striper. I do know that the small poppers, I've been getting a couple of swipes on the Azori 3D inshore popper, that smaller one. I love this thing, casts a mile. I'm looking forward to using this as the week progresses. I mentioned these before as well. It's nice that we're, we're talking now at this point about stripers on top. This is the brand new Tsunami Title Pro popper. I love this one as well. Another one that I'm starting to use. And of course, you've got those Smack It Juniors, hard to find, but all of these are taking fish as well. So it is time to break out the pencils. It's time to pay, break out the poppers and start having at it. But don't forget about that back bay bite because the stripers are still on the prowl back there. And the guys on the Raritan, it's not that the fish have left. They're just scattered. They're moving up the Hudson, but we do have more waves of stripers coming. And we have not even started talking about the post-spawn run of Chesapeake fish. Whether they come out the Chesapeake Bay or use the C and D Canal up through the Delaware, the best is still yet to come here in our region. We'll take a look at some of the local events of interest here in the New Jersey, Delaware region uh, coming up. But first, one hardcore shad fisherman over the weekend took $20,000 on a chunky row. For all of the details on that pricey American shad, let's check in with my friend George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, a little bit of bad weather didn't stop the guys at all in the bi-state shad fishing contest here. You know, they had four grueling days of shad fishing, but they did manage to get a great tournament in. Big thank you to Eric Fisser for organizing this event as he does every year. So good work there. Taking the top spot was Steve Kohler with a 5.6 pound row, taking the lead in the annual contest. Great work there and congratulations, Steve. Now you guys can head, check him out on Facebook at the Bi-State Shad Fishing Contest or catch him over at shadfishingcontest.com to find all the results and prizes for the tournament. Now keeping in mind on the Delaware River, still lots of great fishing guys. The shad continue to run. Also getting a great striper bite. Bruce Pashley checked in and he's been out there fishing some of these stripers as well. Now keep in mind the water is warming up. It is up over 60 degrees now, which means the fish are getting a little 
little more aggressive, you can actually get them on some, some artificial baits. Uh, Bruce was throwing plugs and got into a couple of these really nice little stripers. Uh, you can also throw those, uh, those uh, swim shads and other artificials you typically throw for the striper. So great work there. Keep on that bite. Now, if you want to move over into the trout, still on fire, guys. Lots of great trout fishing, especially with this cooler weather. Uh, dynamic duo of Josh Taylor and Steve Kolnick out on that Lehigh River, getting themselves, as they put it, more trout than you could count uh, on, on the river. Lots of brown trout, lots of keepers, uh, and just a great day on the water, whether you want to spin fish for them or jerk baits or get out there with them on the fly. Lots of great fishing this week, guys. I hope you get on them, but I think we're in for a couple days of wet weather this weekend. We'll have to see how that goes. So get out and get on them. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. Striper Quest, Gray Fish Tag Research is holding its first ever 100% tag and release tournament Thursday, May 18th out of Highlands, New Jersey. This is a very limited event, very exclusive, very limited uh, as we get this thing rolling. But you know that every year we do that tagging expedition out of Highlands every May. Well, this year we're trying to open it up and in the future we're going to open it up a lot more. But if you're interested in joining us for this very special tagging event, it starts with a captain's meeting at Ross Brewery up there in Belford. Then we're running out of bars landing on Thursday, May 18th. But if you'd like to find out more information, just email Roxanne at grayfishtag.org. Roxanne Wilmer, of course, she has all the details on this event. But also, don't forget to pick up that May edition of the Fisherman Magazine because I've got details on a fish named Berkeley. That's the fish that was tagged last fall aboard Chuck Manny's Tymon. We waited months and months and months to hear from that fish again because that mini pat device was in its shoulder. And in the third week in February, that tag popped off, hit the surface, and started feeding the Argo satellite. And you know where she was? 27 miles east of Assateague, Virginia, Assateague Island there along the Delmarva, 27 miles from shore. That is the satellite transmission from the tag antenna directly to the Argo satellite. I have no questions about that. I don't even want to hear it anymore. That fish popped up 27 miles off the beach. Now, that is a little bit different from the fish called Uncle Fred that we tagged the year before. If you look at that May edition, we've got a side-by-side uh, -side analysis. Fred, Uncle Fred last year was already in the mouth of, uh, of the Chesapeake Bay in late November into December, and it appeared to be she was staging in the lower stretches of the Chesapeake uh, before her spawn up the Chesapeake later on in the spring. Now, what makes Berkeley a little bit different is in February, it was nowhere near the mouth of Chesapeake Bay and it was just zigzagging around off the Maryland coast, Maryland and Virginia. So if I could ask that question, if I could ask that fish Berkeley a question, which I can't because all I can get is the tag information, but I would have liked to have asked her, where did you go to spawn? I mean, did she go to the Chesapeake or was she a Delaware fish? Or perhaps that was one of the jumbo fish that moved up into the Raritan Bay and is probably, maybe, possibly already up the Hudson. Again, there's a side-by-side -side analysis of that tag, the tag of a fish called Berkeley. It's in the May edition of the Fisherman Magazine. And I am so excited that we have this event going on in 2023. You can get all the details in the Fisherman Magazine. In this week's, uh, this week's edition, of course, is at thefisherman.com, but it's in the monthly edition. So if you're not a subscriber, I don't know why, you gotta subscribe, but you can find it at tackle shops, you can find it at Wawa, you can find it at your local marina, you can find it at different newsstands. And go find that story about a fish called Berkeley in the Fisherman Magazine. You'll also find a rather interesting headline in the news briefs of the May edition. It goes like this. NOAA says offshore wind could lead to lower, fish, lower fisheries quotas. How about that? Yeah, <laughs> the actual statement comes from a 388-page government report 
that relates to acknowledged disruption of NOAA survey programs and stock assessments on coastal fisheries due to industrial offshore wind development. NOAA says of these serious adverse impacts, and again, this is a quote, these impacts will lead to greater uncertainty in abundance estimates which will likely lead to lower fishery quotas and lost revenue to commercial and recreational fishermen. So I guess for the people that have trashed me, can I turn in my tinfoil cap now? This is something we've been talking about for five years. We do have a problem and I will be sharing more of my five years worth of analysis on electromagnetic fields and NOAA fisheries and the impacts of industrial wind on our fisheries. I will share that at an event on May 13th in a rally at the boatyard on Bonnet Island in Manahawkin. There's a bridge walk and an open discussion that's going to include Mayor Meyer from, uh, from Stafford Township, marine biologist Trisha DeVoe, NJ 101.5 personality Bill Sp uh, Spadia, uh, myself, Congressman Jeff Van Drew, and former gubernatorial candidate Jack Cettarelli. Folks, this isn't about partisan politics, it's about getting to the truth. It's a reminder that all politics is local. You can go to We Are LBI for more details, but I'll be telling you more about that in the next couple of weeks leading up to that event. That same weekend, the folks at Canyon Runner, they're going to be doing a special hands-on seminar clinic in Point Pleasant with Captain Dean Lambros. You can email info at canyonrunner.com for details. Last I heard, they only had like a couple of spots open for the Friday workshop there on the Manasquan. American Angler is hosting a surf tournament on LBI next weekend, May 7th. Check out the local tackle shops on LBI, Surf City Bait and Tackle, Fish Heads, Jingles, so that you can get geared up for that event. But for all the tournament details, you can go to AmericanAnglerUS.com. Finally this week, David Absekin Bay Sportsman Center has big sales, big to do this weekend at the shop. All fishing tackle and supplies, 25% off this Saturday and Sunday, April 29th and 30th, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. No bait included in that deal, but you will find Berkeley Gulp. You're gonna need a lot of it come May 2nd. I hope you've been collecting things. I don't know if it's going to be the gulp, the fish bite fight clubs, probably a combination of both. Both. Absolutely. Can't wait. May 2nd. Coming up. It's coming up fast. Yes, stripers on the beach and in the bays right now. Black drum, tide runner, weak, uh, weak fish, the first blue fish arrived. It's great. But it gets even better next week when the summer flounder season opens at the Jersey Shore, gets underway for the 2023 season. Now, if you're like me and you've been waiting until the last possible minute to get your boat all prepped, well, don't miss the 19th annual Lacey Marine Open House, Route 9 South, Forked River, this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, April 29th through the 30th. Great event, 10% off all cleaners, cleaning supplies, waxes, and also paint supplies. Plus special prices and rebates on Interlux paints, discounts on zinc, anodes, dock, and anchor lines, pettit paint, home port charts, and more. That's this weekend at Lacey Marine. I can't wait to get back on the road again. It starts on Tuesday. I hope you'll join me. Next week, we'll have a full rundown on fluke. And of course, we're talking about weak fish, blue fish, striped bass. Next week, we talk about fluke. So we might as well talk about Grand Slam fishing in the Garden State next week. Catch them up. And I'll talk to you again next week right here at thefisherman.com.